Hey there, welcome to another episode of Business English Help. And for those who don't know, I'm Jesse. I'm here to help you improve your business English and to gain confidence in the workplace if English is not your first language. Today we'll be talking about idioms and vocabulary regarding small talk in the office. So if you want to follow along just like last time or you want to learn more, check out this book. I'm going to put the link in the description. I'm getting these idioms and vocabulary ideas from chapter five. First vocabulary word is chit chat. So chit chat refers to light conversation, not very deep or meaningful. You usually talk about unimportant subjects, subjects that aren't really that important. Usually it's about like the weather or how are you? Good. How are you? More is a greeting, not really deep conversation. It's basically small talk, something that is culturally present in North America and Canada as well as other places, but there are places where <laughs> this does not exist. So an example at the water cooler, I engaged in some chit chat. So the water cooler is a place where people often chit chat. Next, get a move on. Meaning means to hurry up. So some examples, we are running late and we need to get a move on so that we can meet project deadlines. So get a move on. I can say, I need to get a move on. We need to get a move on. However, just a quick cultural tip. It is kind of rude to say you need to get a move on because in a professional setting, it's kind of rude to tell someone what to do or tell people to hurry up. You know, unless you are their boss and you're able to do it in a respectful way, we are not here to tell people what to do. Even though maybe in some cultures it is culturally acceptable, telling people what to do in North America is usually considered rude. So if you have any questions and you want to know if something is rude or not rude in North America, let me know down in the comments with your questions and I will try to answer them in another video. Next is hump day. And the meaning is Wednesday. So this is the day in the work week that is in the middle. So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the middle, and then Thursday, Friday. I believe it comes from like the hump on a camel's back. So some examples you might hear people say it's hump day or happy hump day. I guess you could say people kind of celebrate hump day because this means that once you pass hump day, the work week is almost over. Next is leg up. Meaning is head start. So usually we say that someone has a leg up or to get a leg up. So some examples include previous experience in sales gave Tim a leg up. So his previous experience in sales gave Tim a leg up when applying for this job. So this means because he has previous experience in this field, it gives him a head start or it works in his favor to have that experience. So to have a leg up means that you have already had that head start. But you might also see to get a leg up. So for example, if you want to get a leg up on your competition, you can study how to use this software because a lot of people in your field don't know how to use it. So knowing this software in this program will give you a leg up. Next is taboo. Taboo is something to be avoided in the workplace. So in North America, subjects that are taboo or subjects that should be avoided in my opinion, include sex, religion, and politics. So if you'd like to know more about what is culturally acceptable in the workplace, feel free to watch this video here when it's available. Or if you want to continue watching videos to improve your business English, feel free to click here. Hope to see you in my other video. Take care and bye.